Welcome back. This is chapter 10, part 5. In this part, we'll be estimating a cubic cost function. So this is what we have seen before. We derived this in the previous part. Total variable cost in cubic form, which means it goes up to the power 3, right? Average variable cost is basically total variable cost divided by quantity. You divide this by Q. You're going to get average variable cost. And marginal cost is going to be the first derivative of the total variable cost with respect to Q, right? AQ becomes A. B raised to the power 2, uh, BQ raised to the power 2 becomes 2BQ. Lower this power uh, by 1 and throw this 2 up front. Again, 3 goes up front, 3C. Q raised to the power 2 now, okay? Average variable cost curve looks like this, right? We are interested in average variable cost, quantity, costs measured in dollars. So we are looking for this lowest point. Marginal cost passes through this lowest point. So this lowest point, we found it to be B divided by 2C. So what we can do is once we estimate one of these functions, right? Let's say we're going to estimate average variable cost. You can derive everything else. You can get your total variable cost. You can get average variable cost, uh, marginal cost, and also the lowest point of average variable cost. Also remember the parameters have to satisfy this condition. A needs to be positive, negative, positive. Okay, we derived that in part two. So we're going to study this case. It's an Excel file. I posted it online. Chapter 10, cost estimation example, Rockford Enterprises. Okay, in July 2018, manager of Rockford Enterprises decided to estimate total variable cost, average variable cost, and marginal cost of the firm between 2016 second quarter and 2018 second quarter. So that's nine data points. Capital stock unchanged since the second quarter of 2016. That's really good because you don't want your capital to change. Capital needs to be fixed for the short run. Manager collected nominal current dollar average variable cost data. Output data is actually uh, in real terms, right? You literally have real output in terms of quantity, but the average variable cost collected in dollars. So Average variable cost, again, measured in nominal dollars to remove the effects of inflation from the cost data. You have to deflate the nominal cost. And I'm going to teach you how to actually calculate the real cost data. We are going to use implicit price deflator for GDP published in Survey of Current Business. Okay, so this is a deflator. I'll teach you how to deflate, how to calculate real data. Why is it important? Remember... Uh, in the U.S., we use the CPS uh, basket of goods. So certain things are bought over a period. Let's say in year 2000, this basket costed $100. 2010, this was $120. That means there has been a 20% inflation in 10 years. Okay, That's actually pretty... Um, it used to be pretty typical back in the days, about 2% inflation per year. Th this is expected inflation. And actually, um, this is normal. We are targeting um, Federal Reserve targets about 2% inflation. You don't want too much. You also want, don't want deflation. Deflation is decrease in price levels, which is not good for the economy. Japan had to deal with a lot of deflation. Not cool. Let's work on the Excel example. All right, we are here. Here's the data. Output, this is Q. Average variable cost in nominal dollars. This is implicit price deflator. So as you can see, this price deflated in 2012 dollars. That means it was $100. This basket was costing $100 in 2012. The same basket is 105.77 in 2016 second quarter. And these are quarterly values. I have quantity output here. And I have average variable cost uh, in nominal dollar. We're going to deflate the average variable cost. Let's do first things first. Let's deflate it. Step one, calculate average variable cost in real dollars by using implicit price deflator. We're going to use this. We're going to grab average variable cost. So I'm going to do it like this. Equal sign. Grab average variable cost. We are going to divide this. Divide. Open parentheses. We are dividing with this deflator, but this is in 
percentage term so I'm going to divide this further by 100 so that it will look like um, 0 0.105 okay it's going to be actually sorry 1.0577 okay so you want to turn it into percentage terms so look nominal dollars 38 dollars real dollars 36 dollars you wash the effects of inflation the numbers are not very different but i just washed this off of the effects of inflation i'm going to turn this all in bold okay this is ready now all right so then quantity this is basically this column so i'm just going to equal right i'm just going to copy this over here uh i want to see them all together so what am i doing we're going to estimate average variable costs to get estimates of a b and c so in this equation as you can see here in this equation we do have intercept unlike the production function estimation we do have intercept therefore we are not going to suppress our intercept just keep that in mind so average variable cost is a plus b q plus c q raised to the power 2 so what do we do we need to create q raised to the power 2 so i'm going to grab this one power 2 okay so q squared i have all my data squared up so now i'm going to actually run the regression so i'm going to go to data data analysis and then we're going to pick regression okay so i'm going to y range is going to be your average variable uh not the not this one sorry we are going to grab real dollars and then here you're gonna have this one constant is not gonna be zero but i do have labels okay constant is not zero so once you estimate this interesting okay so i'm going to go to my main page and i'm going to copy this and let's actually copy everything so sheet one all right so let's put it here let's analyze it a little bit okay hi r squared that's good if value is large so it's significant definitely at one percent level intercept is a okay so this is positive b is negative c is positive they're all statistically significant at five percent level right this is q is um the coefficient estimate of q which is b is five percent sig statistically significant okay let's just calculate everything so i do have group i'm going to copy it here so i can access it easily so what is my a a is right here intercept here b boom and c okay okay i'm gonna move these here insert cut cells okay so q can be any value i can calculate the minimum point of my average variable cost with negative b right negative d 22 divided by two times d 23 okay so these values this is fixed and these are fixed as well so q can be any value so let's calculate the uh, average variable cost average variable cost formula we are just going to enter that formula so i have a d21 i'm going to put dollar signs i know it just takes a little bit more a plus okay b i'm going to insert dollar signs again to fix them times q q is going to be times we're going to grab q from here okay also let's fix those values for q dollar dollar plus right i have c again let's fix it times again q raised to the power two okay raised to the power two okay let's see what we got so it is 44 47 average variable cost um 
if we put 10 units it becomes 4308 okay all right so we did this one let's calculate marginal cost marginal cost is a similar formula but it's not the same so i'm going to copy this formula just change you know a is intact it's going to be two times two times two times i keep putting it sign two times bq plus three times d raised to the yes c q raised to the power two okay so this is marginal cost and total variable cost you can either calculate like this i'm just going to copy the formula and adjust it right aq times this one bq raised to the power 2 raise this power 2 i'm just updating the formula in c raised to the power 3. so you either get this or you can do simply very easy equal i can do average variable cost here times quantity interesting look i got the same result either way i actually calculate it so let's see what we get at the lowest point of average variable cost right if i produce the quantity check this out obviously these total variable costs are equal to each other average variable and uh social uh so i keep saying social short term marginal costs are equal to each other so if we draw this i just want to show you what it looks like i apologize for this is my ever weird drawing average variable cost quantity this is dollar cost curve okay so marginal cost all right so this one 196 196.75 i'm just going to put 196 is the lowest point of average variable cost and we learned that at this level marginal and average variable costs are both 30 dollar 44 cents right they're equal to each other is so I'm going to create a column Q, different values of Q, average variable cost, different va uh, values of SMC, right? I'm just going to create different values and total variable cost. Okay, so Q is going to be variable, average variable cost copy. I'm going to paste the formula FX. So you make sure you pass, paste the formula. However, Q is now going to be variable. So what was my Q? My Q was D24. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just going to refer here and do this. Again, refer here, boom. So it's going to vary with the variable value. So if this is, let's say 100, start with 100, right? 101 let's see if it's going to change it okay so check this out it's changing as we go smc i'm going to grab copy the formula here however we must adjust the formula so it doesn't take the value from d24 that is a fixed number whenever i see d24 i'm going to refer it to this table now Again, D24, and I'm not fixing the value because I really want value to change as the quantity changes. And total variable cost, simply I can do this one times, boom. And that's what you get. And if we go actually all the way down, I don't know, let's go all the way down to, let's see. I'm actually going to start from one, uh, 162, okay, so now let's do this, where did it go, okay, it went all the way to, it's a little more than what I wanted, but let's scale it down, my best, okay, okay, this is fine, <laughs> all right, so this one, pull it down, calculate the whole thing, same and same we can actually draw all this thing so let's do average variable cost and marginal cost insert scatter boom all right so it started from the range it grabbed is weird it's okay 
All right, it is supposed to start from 160. So I am going to do format axis to change the scale of it so that we can see it better though I started it from 160. There you go, you have your marginal cost curve, you have your average variable cost. This is how we estimate the cubic cost function. So it's really important to be careful about this uh, coefficient estimate C was statistically significant in this case. So you have nice convex shape. So going back to our slides, this is one of the issues we might run into. A potential data problem that you can have is that, for instance, your data points could be bunched. You know, you don't have the data for the entire spectrum and you have a bunch of data points bunched in an area so this could be very short period of time data so this looks like a, you know just a line right when c is zero you actually don't have a convex shape so this is the case for instance you can estimate your data and find that there is no convex shape you could basically fit like a line here so this is one of the things that can happen C can be statistically insignificant, so you don't get this nice convex shape. Why does this happen? Because the data is bunched in here. You just observe this portion of your cost function. So try to observe it in different levels of output to actually really estimate the full shape of average variable cost. And this is it for chapter 10. Have a good one.